Glad to have you join us on this edition of the show. Our tech tip is on reviewing the privacy settings of your devices. We have much more lined up for you. But first, some tech news and updates. This is Tech Trends and I'm Chukameka Agbata. Big Brother is watching, but in the future, he may no longer be so all-knowing. Riding the wave of a global push to comply with new privacy standards, a small Israeli company believes it can help you and your face stay anonymous in a hyper-connected world. The startup called DID says it has developed a firewall to block facial recognition, the ubiquitous technology that can now unlock smartphones, tag friends on Facebook, or help police pick out an individual hiding in a crowd. The problem is that with facial recognition on the rise, hackers have a new target, huge reservoir of profile pictures linked to personal information. Companies around the world are spending big money to protect such databases before a stricter European law takes effect in May. Called the General Data Protection Regulation, it gives people more control over their online information and applies to all groups that do business in Europe. The idea for DID took shape a decade ago when two of its founders took a trip to South America after serving in Israel's special forces. Friends would post pictures online, but because of their previous jobs, they were forbidden from sharing pictures publicly in case they were recognized. They began looking for a way for people to share pictures while protecting their identities, and a year ago formed the company. The challenge was to foil facial recognition algorithms which analyze a person's face and match it to a stored digital image in the same way that crime scene fingerprints are run against a database. Our photos contain biometric data. Using them and face recognition, anyone can track you, steal your identity, and hack your devices. Samsung's face unlock feature is being hacked using photos and Apple's iPhone X has already been hacked. Using face recognition, anyone can reveal sensitive personal information about you. Designers have created eyeglasses that reflect light to jam cameras, and websites offer fashion and makeup tips for camouflaging your face. But in general, nothing can be done to avoid being identified. DID solution is a system of digital alchemy that subtly alters stored pictures enough to escape detection by face recognition algorithms. Side by side, the changes are noticeable, but on its own, the altered picture appears normal. DID is planning a pilot with Cloudinary, a firm that manages 15 billion cloud-based images and videos for web and mobile developers. It has also signed preliminary agreement with a number of leading government organizations. Perry would not disclose which ones, nor how much the products will sell for. The product launch is planned for the end of May, around the time the new European law takes effect. Face recognition algorithms have become more accurate than humans. Because of that, more and more organizations are using our faces as identifiers. If it's to access our phones, to withdraw money, or at border controls. That's why our photos must be protected, because unlike passwords, you cannot change your face. Yuval Elovishi, who heads the Cybersecurity Research Center at Israel's Ben Gurion University, said there's now an arms race between groups developing facial recognition algorithms and those looking to confound them. He said DID's technology was an achievement and important for privacy, but it did have its limitations. I think it's a very, very important technology, and it's going to be a continuous arm race between people that are developing matching algorithms to match two pictures to the same entity, and people that actually try to disable this matching by modifying the picture so it will be very, very difficult to understand that two people, two pictures are actually belong to the same person. We use uh, the most advanced techniques in the image processing and uh, deep learning. And then giving a photo 
uh, our algorithm does many changes, many manipulations to the, to the images, but the best changes that it can do. And what is the best changes? The best changes is in terms of fooling face recognition algorithms, maintaining human vision similarity, and third and most important is making it impossible or I'll say hard for AI to overcome because we are going to be the standard of image protection. Everyone are going to use this solution eventually. DID's second floor office is secluded in an inconspicuous residential block opposite a playground. It has raised four million dollars including from Israel's Pitango Venture Capital and Silicon Valley's Y Combinator to support a team of 14 computer engineers. The assumption behind this technology is that whoever is going to publish the pictures will have to use this technology to try to obfuscate the picture so it will not be able, nobody will be able to match seven different pictures to the same entity. Of course, if somebody, you cannot oblige everybody to use this technology and to publish pictures only after a transformation using this technology. This is a disadvantage. There are drawbacks for law enforcement agencies using the system. It will be harder to locate a suspect. So DID is working on a solution that will allow such agencies to authenticate identities without storing biometric information. At Wakefield High School in Arlington, Virginia, 12 grade students comb through news articles and social media content over their laptops. Using a digital curriculum called Checkology, developed by Bethesda-based non-profit news literacy project, they're learning to differentiate between news and opinion, propaganda and satire. Everybody's on? Their teacher, Patricia Hunt, uses current news affairs such as immigration and government shutdowns, as well as social media posts and television shows to teach them signs of a fake or legitimate news item. Hunt says she's been teaching students to be savvy news consumers for the last 25 years. The explosion of social media and a rise in fake automated accounts called boots that spread false information like wildfire during the elections was a wake-up call to ensure the fight against fake news for the digital age. We get the Washington Post at my house, so that'd be one main source. Another would be internet sources like Reddit, which I don't always take to heart immediately, you know, look through the comments a bit, see what people are saying about it. News, CNN news and like um, my phone and media. Websites and TV and even on social media, you hear about what's going on. Um, I'm usually just on my computer, but I usually get my information from my grandmother. I don't really pay attention to news that often, only if it's like relevant to me or really like breaking news. They're not, they're not exposed in the same way to mainstream media like I grew up with. So what I'm dealing with in terms of what students are coming in, they are really prone to the trappings of these fake news websites or, or just social media in general. Um, what is legitimate and what is not legitimate. Um, they really need exposure and they need those skills. In the past few years, a number of states have considered bills seeking media literacy education in schools. According to advocacy group Media Literacy Now, the momentum built rapidly after the election as lawmakers recognize the urgency of such classes in the face of sophisticated misinformation and propaganda campaigns. In 2017, 11 states, including Virginia, California, New York, and New Jersey, introduced or are considering bills that would introduce media literacy skills into the classroom. I know personally, as a social studies teacher, I was surprised by the outcome of the election and also wondering what role I play as an educator in the outcome of the election. So, you know, I think every teacher. Um, worth their salt, wants kids to, they want students to walk out of here um, to be critical thinkers. And so I think that for many teachers, it was a wake up call in terms of what are we doing when it comes to critical thinking. The term fake news gained currency as a buzzword during the 2016 U.S. presidential election. 
Mainstream media reported extensively on the online spread of fabricated stories aimed at helping Donald Trump win the presidency. Meanwhile, Trump has repeatedly accused the mainstream media itself of producing fake news. So since the election, um, we feel that in many ways, you know, we've gone from being a voice in the wilderness to an answer to a prayer. Uh, we've seen much greater interest in our mission. Uh, we've seen a, a big uptake in um, registrations for our Checkology virtual classroom uh, from educators across the country. And we've also seen increased financial support. Um, so, I, you know, I think in a way, um, you know, the country and the world are sort of catching up with our realization for quite some time um, that news literacy is a survival skill in an information age. I mean, it's a new literacy for the 21st century. Miller has been working with students since 2009, teaching media literacy skills in after-school programs in New York, Washington, and Chicago. Post-2016, he noticed a sharp spike in interest and support for his mission, including huge financial donations from Silicon Valley. You know, this is a, the equivalent of a public health crisis, and it's been brewing more beneath the surface for a long time now, certainly for the decade in which we've been working. I think that, that the election and the aftermath and the focus on what's called fake news, you know, has really elevated the profile as an issue. But it's, it's, it's the technology, the, te the profound technological changes um, and the way that people, you know, the, the access they have to information and the, and the challenge of, of sorting the informational wheat from the chaff that have really made this such an urgent matter. Miller says Checkology, launched in May 2016, now reaches hundreds of thousands of students in 81 countries, with more than 11,000 educators in the United States alone who have registered to use the virtual classroom program. And it's not just educators. Hunt says some of her students start the year being cynical about what they see on the news, but then find themselves engaged and confident in their ability to make informed opinions about the events shaping their world.